I think they made this public appearance too soon, both of them, because you can tell where the hurt is still there. You can tell where there's no a, a lack of accountability on, on both of their behalf. And they brought it out to the public. I talked about this in a previous video. With, Don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. That's all I could think about when I seen the Derek Jackson interview on Dear Future Wifey podcast. Now, there's a part two to this, and I'm just addressing the first part of the video. So there will be a part two to this. But before we throw away Derek Jackson, before we cancel them, him if he's not already canceled, right? You have to think he had the relationship game in a chokehold for some years. I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of y'all who bought the books, who subscribed to the podcast, who were sharing the videos with the friends. Now, a lot of guys, for the most part, we we knew what he was doing. We knew he was pandering. I mean, when you think about pandering, he he's the the very image of pandering if you looked it up in a dictionary or if you looked it up online, probably. I don't know. But he he has so much power. There takes it takes a disciplined man to say no to the advances, to control your flesh in such a way that even though you know you can, you won't, that you're going to go home at night to your wife and to your kids. I think this interview is a is a blueprint for relationship coaches, right? And what not to do, especially when it comes to men. Because when you're in this relationship kind of coaching thing, it takes a disciplined man to say no, to know how to cut it off if there are some advances. Now, with Derek Jackson in the video, he talked about his childhood and how his he was raised by a single parent. Uh, mom and he had his sisters and and granted he said he had an older brother I, I won't give away the whole interview if you haven't seen it go check it out but he talked about his his issues with pornography growing up uh, and that you know he had some bouts with pornography and that's an issue within itself when it comes to men he talked about in the video where he liked to watch himself have sex with other women in videos that he recorded. And there was a, a piece where Denea Jackson talked about that as well when she discovered the videos. Call the man what you want, but he had access to a bunch of women. I'm not saying that's okay, but again, it takes a disciplined person to say no to those kind of advances. The, the, the thing that got me with the video was he took accountability for some of his actions, but he always countered it with what Danae was doing wrong. And this is where he kind of started to lose me because I was thinking in my head, as I'm thinking about recording this video, he's not really taking accountability for his actions because true accountability is when you say, this is where I went wrong. You're not going to throw your ex under the bus you're not going to talk bad about them. You're going to say, these were my issues and I could have done better. Did she have her hangups? Yes, she did. Did she have issues? Yes, she did. But we're going to keep the focus on me. You have me on the show for me to talk about where I came up short in life, not to throw her under the bus because she already had her episodes. If you didn't see them, go check those out. So he was coming on the show to, I believe, maybe somewhat try to defend himself, which I don't think he had to do. But I think some people maybe wanted to hear his perspective after watching what after watching the 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 Denea episode. So I can kind of understand that. But when you don't take accountability for your actions, people really don't show you that kind of grace. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that's going to be in the comments. That's like I'm still not rocking with this guy because he's still not taking accountability for his actions. And I tell people this all the time. One of the best ways you can heal is to take heal faster is to take accountability for your actions and not to blame the other person. Because if he went on there and said what he had to say about him, I believe that could have maybe saved him a little grace. And I also learned about this whole going through a divorce thing and, and having bitterness and resentment against your spouse. Sometimes it's too soon. 
I think they jumped on the show too soon. I think they made this public appearance too soon, both of them. Because you can tell where the hurt is still there. You can tell where there's no a, a lack of accountability on, on both of their behalf. And they brought it out to the public. I talked about this in a previous video with Beyonce's mom and, and her, her ex-husband. And I talked about how when they were on the Black Love episode, I mean, she was going in uh, on her husband and you could see it in a Black Love episode and the video went crazy because he was looking at Tina like, really? <laughs> you know, it was the facial expressions. And in that video, I talked about how it's just best that you and your spouse be in a good place before making things public and even going through a divorce. Because I remember when I went through my divorce, I took some time off social media. I, I remarried. I took some time off social media and I wanted to get my thoughts together. So when I came back on, when I rebranded, some of you know me from my old brand. When I came back, I didn't come back to sling mud at my ex-wife. I didn't. I've made numerous videos about, how, and this isn't to put me on a pedestal or anything, but this is just something I learned that I think helped me in the process was I made content about where I went wrong in the marriage. Now, the second part of the Derek Jackson interview, maybe he might talk about being accountable more, you know, because there was a piece in a video where he where he rubbed me wrong was he said, I guess, the and I'm throwing on my air quotes, the reason he was pandering was he wanted to hold men accountable. And I get what he was saying, but who was holding you accountable? That's what I'm thinking. Who are you accountable to? And my my old pastor, he he would always tell me, uh, he would speak to the congregation, don't tell me who you over until you tell me who you're under. So as a man, are you submitted to another man who can hold you accountable? And I think that's something that we don't have in today's culture is accountability, uh, an accountability partner, right? Like who was Derek accountable to? Was there somebody in his circle who could tell him, hey, man, don't be out here doing that. You're going to get caught up. Or was he just too powerful to hear what anyone else had to say? Because, again, he had the game in the chokehold and was making a bunch of money, appearances, books, all that other stuff. So sometimes you can get so high and mighty and people will gas you up so much that you you can't come down, that you're almost above reapproach. Re so when you are caught for doing some things that you shouldn't the fall is great and it's unfortunate that he's in this spot right now but i think in my opinion he should maybe just take some time off i get it he wanted to come on the show to try to clear his name and, and to tell his story but he should take some time off and just disappear for a little while this is just my two cents and then maybe come back, but come back in a sense to where you are being accountable. You're not blaming anyone. You are not trying to clear your name, but you're saying now I'm better because I learned from my mistakes because I think he came back too soon. And then when you watch the video, you could tell that there's still a lot of hurt. There's still a lot of bitterness and, and, and pain. So Derek, if you see this video, uh, it's going to be OK. No one is 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 here to uh, in this video, not here to judge you. I just wanted to set the record straight and just kind of give my opinion on this thing, because I see this happen to a lot of relationship coaches on a smaller scale where they they on a smaller scale and they still getting caught up cheating with with somebody. So let this be a blueprint to all my male relationship coaches and learn from Derek mistakes, right? I'm even looking at this where it's like, okay, Sean, don't do this. Sean, don't do that. Sean, don't do, because I'm not trying to get caught up because the thing with relationship coaching is so many people want to be relationship coaches, but no one wants to be held accountable. Nobody wants to have someone that's over them to, to help keep them accountable for their actions. And to actually live this stuff out, like you have to live this. So I'm thinking, why are everybody trying to do this stuff? Like this, this comes with a price. And I'm sure Derek Jackson can tell you now that this has come with a price. 
So make sure next time you know somebody or if you plan on getting into relationship coaching, learn from Derek Jackson, learn from some of the other people who might have uh, fell from grace, if you will. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.